Hello, I'm Mary V. Today, let's talk about things that can happen during performances. So at one point, uh, I was in a smaller group and we were playing <coughs> the Barbara Daggio and I had a, the most awful cold, um, sore throat, runny nose and everything. And uh, we were just coming to the end of the Barbara Daggio, which if you, you may know it, it's very, very quiet, very still. Um, and really it would have spoiled the magic if I'd taken out my hanky and blown my nose. And I had a massive drip coming down from my nose towards my violin. And we were finishing there. And I was watching this drip and I was watching my bow and I was watching the drip and watching the bow. And um, there wasn't anything I could do about it. And my nose was really, really itchy. But anyway, we... Uh, we finished that and uh, it was okay. <laughs> I had a massive nose blow uh, when we got into the changing room, so it was so satisfying. But um, another thing that happened to me was we were just about to play an opera and I was tuning up my violin and suddenly it uh, there was a, a massive bang, a, a really loud bang. Everyone looked around, what the hell is happening? And I saw that the my bridge had exploded and gone away. I didn't know where it was. So the conductor looked and I showed him my violin and he said, OK, right, so everyone started. And my bridge had ended up over on the other side of the orchestra among the cellos. So the bridge was handed desk to desk through the orchestra back to me. And while the orchestra was playing away wonderful opera music, I was trying to get the bridge back on my violin and uh, tune it up. It was really impossible. But, um, so I didn't manage to actually get it together and tune it up and get the, the bridge back on until the first in interval. And I was so nervous because uh, I'm, I was sort of rather afraid of the violin exploding again. But when I took it for a repair, they said that the, the bridge had very slowly gone forward and forward every time I had uh, tuned it up. And uh, it just incrementally had just gone like that and then one day it was too much and it flew off. So <clears throat> that's quite a lesson to learn. So another thing that happened, uh, especially in opera, um, you, you're playing in the pit, which is underneath the stage. And these places are very, very dusty uh, places. And there was one time that a, f a, a mouse ran over my foot. <laughs> and uh, it took all, everything I had not to scream because, <laughs> you know, I'm a little bit afraid of mice. And normally what I do is be like a cartoon. I'd stand on a chair and ooh. But uh, I couldn't do that, so it ran over my foot and uh, it made me shake. But we kept going and then we told the management about it and they just said, yeah, you know, didn't do anything about it. But we've had um, cockroaches, uh, infestations of all, <laughs> all sorts of things in these places. So, you know, you, you kind of learn to wear things where, uh, you know, the, the rodents and the insects wouldn't run up your legs. So that, that's the unglamorous part. Uh, <laughs> I remember being on tour um, in uh, East Germany and we went into marvellous halls, huge halls. Um, and the fashion was for very highly polished floors. And of course, um, one of our viola players slipped on the floor during the entrance and uh, managed to hold her viola up as she fell, which was um, absolutely amazing. So we stopped and uh, she was she limped off, we helped her off and uh, we regrouped. And she had a terribly sore hip. Um, but anyway, after about 10 minutes um, with a player either side of her, she came on again and uh, very gingerly, you know, but we got an amazing, uh, amazing applause for that. And she was, <laughs> she was okay afterwards, you know, 
But honestly, the number of times that uh, players have slipped, um, it made me very nervous. So I started wearing really good non-slip shoes underneath my big ball gun. <laughs> um, but there was a time on tour when uh, we were loading our instruments out of the, our cars and uh, the double bass player took his uh, double bass out of the car and uh, a lorry started to back over it and he ran over to the, the truck, it was just a truck, and held the back of the truck back and the, the double bass had been rolled a little bit like this. I shout, we all shouted and everything. I managed to save the double bass from being completely destroyed. It wasn't damaged at all. So then there was the time when we were playing in a marquee uh, in one evening. And it was rather embarrassing because in order to keep the flies away, there were these two sort of large electronic fly traps behind us. Uh, sort of blue lights and um, every time a fly was attracted to this thing it, it sort of popped and fizzled <laughs> Bzz, like that you know and it was quite loud and then you'd hear the sound of this blue bottle whatever it was sort of falling on the floor so we were playing glorious music Mozart and you know all, all sorts of stuff you know interspersed with bzz, all night you know and the smell of the, fr the flies sort of baking fizzling oh. so we were pretty glad to get out of that one um, there was a concert I, I, I did where there was no uh, way to it apart from over the hills because it was in a fantastic isolated lighthouse and that was amazing we had to carry um, our violins, everything over the the land, over to this lighthouse. Luckily, it was uh, in the summer. It was absolutely beautiful, and there's no electricity in this lighthouse, so it was a candlelight um, concert. Absolutely magical. One of the highlights of uh, my co my concerts. Absolutely beautiful. Um, it was quite tough coming back afterwards, <laughs> you know, in lamplight and torches and everything, but absolutely amazing. One of the best venues I've ever been in. Um, one of the most difficult venues I've ever been in was uh, actually in the BBC studio in Scotland, in Glasgow. Uh, it was a large, very large room and it didn't have any windows in it and it had a massive clock. Uh, on the wall facing the orchestra and it was extremely difficult not to look at this enormous clock <clears throat> with the seconds dragging the minutes and the hours dragging along and you were looking and you couldn't help looking until you were going to get your tea break <laughs> and uh, you know the setup there was no windows there was no air um, you know I, I was a very new player when I was freelancing there and it was almost impossible to keep your enthusiasm up because the, the whole atmosphere made you very, very tired. There wasn't any sort of air circulation. And then there was this blooming clock there, um, you know. And the other thing about the BBC was that the canteen was out, <laughs> quite far away. So the orchestra, the whole orchestra had to sort of <laughs> hurry down and grab a very quick cup of tea and then all the way back so it, it, it did give you a bit more energy but it also took quite a lot of energy to go and get your cup of tea there was no relaxation and then there was this sort of deadening effect of this massive room so I, I was pretty glad to um, get into the concert halls and get into different venues away from the that particular studio and uh, it's all gone now the BBC Scotland <laughs> in that particular building it's all gone there was one time when we were waiting to go on uh, in a very, very small vestibule and the whole group was crushed together <laughs> in this small vestibule. And just before we went on, someone said, um, Mary, you've got the longest hair in the group. So I, I said, yes, I have. 
And and then someone else said, yes, but Mary, you've got the shortest legs. <laughs> and for some reason, I got the giggles. I just couldn't stop laughing. And then we had to go on. And that was a very difficult concert because uh, I, everything set me off. I, I, I couldn't play. I was giggling um, because for some reason it was just being all so crushed in and um, and someone saying that to me just before we went on, I really lost my composure. That, that was a difficult one for me. <laughs> but one time we went over to um, Iona Abbey, uh, which is a magnificent place uh, on the Isle of Iona. And you have to take a ferry uh, to get there. And I love Iona because it's where um, ancient Scottish kings are buried. Macbeth <laughs> is there. Um, there's no, you know, the area is there, but they didn't have um, headstones in those days. So, you know, I was standing on various spots thinking I might be on the actual grave of where Macbeth actually is. You know, it's very romantic. But Iona itself is an absolutely beautiful place. It's got um, the Abbey of St. Columba and um, it's just got such a rich history and it's a way, it's a magical place away from the mainland. And um, I remember we were playing a uh, modern piece uh, <clears throat> and I remember distinctly a feeling that it didn't suit the Abbey, this, uh, it was a saxophone and a little orchestra. And I remember just feeling a little embarrassed about filling this <laughs> ancient abbey with this sort of rude modern music, you know, because when we, in the other parts of the program, when we played, um, well, the, the Barber Adagio and, and everything, the, the way that it filled the space in, in that cathedral was oh, absolutely beautiful, absolutely amazing. Um, so there's a few little tales from um, traveling around uh, an orchestral life, you know, playing with groups. It's uh, a wonderful, fantastic life. And um, you meet all sorts of incredible people and wonderful colleagues that, um, you know, being on the road is, is great, is really great. But um, if that suits you, that's great. If you want to be in the orchestra watching the clock, <laughs> you know, uh, that may be something that's fine for you. But uh, I like a lot of variety and uh, take my violin and have all these different acoustics to uh, experience and explore. And uh, going abroad, um, playing in East Germany was amazing before the wall came down. So anyway, you know, I could talk for a long time about various things that's happened. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.